So thank you and um, good morning everybody and hopefully you can uh, hear me okay. So I'm, I'm David Nuttall, I'm the Deputy Director for Dementia and Disabilities at the Department of Health and uh, Social Care and just uh, this will be a relatively um, brief presentation which uh, I'm hoping we'll just talk a little bit about aims and ambitions for the um, 2020 challenge. A brief recap on the progress that has been made uh, to date. And then I'm going to talk a little bit, um, uh, as Rachel suggested, about the forthcoming review uh, and uh, say a little bit about how you can get involved um, in that as well. So a little bit of context and apologies. I mean, when you put the slides together, you're not completely certain of at what point in the agenda you're going to uh, appear. So some of this, uh, as I go through the presentation, you'll have already heard uh, this morning, and no doubt some of it will be said again um, over the course of the day. Um, so dementia, back in 2015, when the current challenge on dementia 2020 was being um, uh, put together and published, uh, dementia was already one of the top five um, causes of death in the ONS statistics, um, with around 12% around of all deaths attributed to, to dementia. Uh, and we know from surveys that dementia is uh, the most feared health condition in the UK, with 62% of respondents to a YouGov uh, poll reporting that they felt a diagnosis would mean their life was effectively um, over. And the numbers of, of people uh, with, uh, with dementia is expected to double in the next 30 years, with predicted costs likely to treble to over £50 billion, pounds, um, as we set out in the 2020 Challenge document. And back in 2015, um, which is only a few years ago, there had already been uh, some significant progress made. Um, at that point, we had, as uh, Jeremy Hughes was talking about this morning, one million dementia friends. We had significant numbers of staff across the NHS and in social care who had been undertaking some basic dementia awareness uh, exercises. Uh, and the diagnosis rate back then was around uh, six in 10. So six in 10 of people estimated or thought to have um, uh, dementia had a formal um, diagnosis. But it was very clear that um, more needed to be done at that point. So in February 2015, the uh, 2020 Dementia Challenge was published, and uh, this was then, as it is now, a key priority uh, for government, a key priority to make significant progress on. And the vision of that challenge was to create a society by, where by 2020, every person with dementia, their carers and families uh, from all parts of the country could receive uniformly high quality and compassionate care, from diagnosis right through to end of life uh, in, every, in every setting. And to oversee and uh, manage the progress, uh, we established a Dementia Programme Board, which brings together uh, all of the various partners um, who have a hand in delivering and making this a reality, uh, which comprises everybody from government departments, arm's length bodies, uh, such as NHS England, um, we've just heard from Xanthi, uh, the third sector, Alzheimer's Society, other organisations, the research bodies, industry. So a huge number of organisations that have a really key role and a key and critical role uh, in making the challenge a reality, brought together in a group which is chaired by our Minister Caroline Dynage to make sure that we are overseeing uh, progress and pushing things um, uh, forward. Now, the sort of vision and aim for the 2020 challenge is relatively straightforward to articulate, uh, and it can be boiled down to just these two points, making, making the country by 2020 the best country in the world for somebody with a diagnosis of dementia uh, and their carers and families to live, and the, becoming the best place in the world to undertake research into dementia and other neurodegenerative diseases. Um, so kind of creating the right environment in which uh, research can take place to enable us to make 
progress towards uh, disease modifying treatment. So relatively straightforward and simple to articulate, much more difficult and challenging to um, uh, achieve in practice. And it is ambitious, and just looking at the, the detail of that challenge document, we have 18 headline commitments under which there are more than 50 specific uh, activities, milestones, uh, and detailed commitments uh, uh, that we have made, grouped under four themes. And just to recap, uh, the first theme was around risk reduction, uh, where we wanted to increase public awareness of how you reduce the risk uh, of um, developing dementia, uh, where we want to make sure that we have equal access to timely diagnosis across all parts of the country. And we've just heard uh, from Xanthi about some of the variation in diagnosis rates that still um, persist. Under the health and care theme, GPs playing a leading role in, co in continuity, ensuring continuity of care. Uh, we want there to be meaningful care following a diagnosis in line with the NICE guidance, which we again heard about this morning. Appropriate training for all staff uh, that are involved in care for people with um, a diagnosis of dementia. And we want to see dementia-friendly hospitals and care homes. And again, that should be all of them. Within the theme of awareness and social action, uh, we had a commitment to create an additional three million dementia friends. Um, so uh, in 2015, we had one million. We heard from Jeremy earlier that we've achieved two million dementia friends, um, but we have quite a long way to go to get the additional two million to fulfill the commitment by 2020. Increasing dementia-friendly communities as well, uh, making places uh, able to support people with dementia in all of their day-to-day uh, -day activities. As part of that, businesses should be supported to become dementia friendly, uh, and both local and national government would play quite a key role in ensuring and supporting that awareness raising. And then in the final theme, um, a number of um, specific objective commitments against research and funding, making UK the best place for dementia research, doubling the funding by 2025, uh, establishing the UK Dementia Research Institute, which again we've heard about. Um, and I suppose the, the, really the key one there is um, this commitment to doing everything possible to achieve and realise a disease-modifying um, intervention by 2025. So again, a very simple uh, and easy to articulate vision, very ambitious with a lot that needs to be achieved to actually bring that to life. So following the publication of the challenge in, 20, in February 2015, we then issued the implementation plan the following year. Um, and this details how the challenge will be met in, in, in some detail. I think the key things to say really are that this was developed uh, genuinely in partnership with a whole range of organisations, with stakeholders, listening to um, the voices of people with dementia as well to uh, help us to design a, um, a programme which is, uh, as I said, challenging and stretching but realisable and practical and possible. The implementation plan essentially has two halves to it. I think inevitably the first couple of years post-2015, uh, it, it was relatively easier to set out um, the kind of detail of what would need to happen in subsequent years because we were closer to it at that point. Um, almost by design, the later years of the challenge period, so 2018, 2019, 2020, were a little bit lighter on the detail. And the commitment we made um, in the implementation plan was that we would look during the course of 2018 this year um, at undertaking a detailed review to see how we're doing, what progress, what progress we've made, um, but also to identify any areas where we feel that we're not uh, on track to deliver or where things need to um, be done in a slightly different way to ensure that we actually realise that 2020 vision uh, in full. Uh, and I think our assessment is that we are making good progress um, and that the Dementia Programme Board, which meets quarterly, uh, monitors the data and has a look at what is happening. And we do see um, positive indications. Um, the diagnosis rate 
has been consistently above um, the ambition that was set of two thirds, and, and uh, you've just seen the data to, to demonstrate that. We have got in excess of two million dementia friends, and that's a number which is steadily increasing consistently over time, which is a, a tremendous um, achievement and kind of reflecting all of the hard work that goes on around <coughs> the country to raise awareness. And there are now 318 dementia-friendly communities in England and Wales. Um, and again, a number which continues to rise over time, which is um, hugely positive. Across both the NHS and social care, uh, really vast numbers of staff have at least undertaken uh, the so-called tier one basic awareness. Um, and so we think that there is a good level of that general awareness of um, dementia across uh, staff who are delivering services. Um, in order to realise the ambition that all staff who are dealing day to day with people with dementia have uh, all of the requisite skills, then the, clearly there is some more still to be um, done on that front. We do have um, data, and you've seen some of that today, and no doubt you'll see a little bit more of it later. And I think that has really um, been an improvement over a period of time, that we now have means to have a look at how um, performance in a whole range of domains is, is, uh, uh, is, is changing over time, identifying those areas of the very best practice and learning from those, as much as identifying those areas that perhaps have a little bit more uh, to do. And uh, we have met our ambitions in terms of the amount of research funding that is being made available for uh, activities, both in terms of biomedical research, so looking at particular compounds, drugs, treatments, as much as into the um, care side to have a look at what is the very best practice that should be being adopted uh, across our health and care services. So I mentioned we committed to undertake our um, uh, review, and um, that is now underway. Um, as I mentioned, there is uh, good progress in a whole range of areas, and we do track all of the 18 commitments. We track all of the 50-plus specific details to have a look at how things are, are, are doing. Um, what we really want to do at this point, though, is not just kind of form our own view of how um, we are progressing in achieving uh, the, the, the vision of the, of the 2020 challenge, but to hear back um, from partners around what their sense of, of how we are, are doing actually um, is. So we, we are taking, uh, undertaking this review in two phases. In the first phase, we are doing what we're calling a stock take. So that is uh, informed by a whole range of sets of information that we have available to us. We have, for example, established something which we call the Citizens Engagement Panel, which is a standing panel of people with um, dementia, their carers, uh, where every quarter we can ask particular survey questions and um, get a sense of panel's views of, of how we're doing in particular um, areas. And we have our first one with a set of results due to come in uh, shortly. Um, we have ongoing dialogue with all of our delivery partners, which tells us quite a lot of information. And many of those partners will have um, their own networks of, of people that can give them a view from the ground too. And thirdly, we also um, have launched a, a call for evidence. So we have a, um, uh, a website where you can go to and provide views as well. And I'll, I'll give the details of that in a second. So that's really looking at whether we're on track to meet the commitments by 2020 in the opinion of the people that uh, uh, are best placed to form those sorts of opinions to tell us if there are things that need to be done differently, if there are, for example, different sets of actions or commitments that need to be made in order to realise that vision by 2020. And to give us a bit of a sense about who is best placed to deliver some of those. So uh, is it us in the department? Is it NHS England? Is it the third sector? Is it somebody else? And then the second phase uh, of this work, which will take place later uh, in this calendar year, we'll be looking at what people think needs to happen beyond 
2020. So um, our sort of eye is very much on meeting the commitments we've made by 2020. We are uh, also very aware that people are talking about what is the, uh, what happens after that. Um, and so we, as part of our call for evidence, are taking views as to what people think needs to happen next. And we'll have a look at that information and that will kind of guide uh, what we think um, follows uh, after 2020. Um, so yeah, I've, I've said a little bit about this already. Uh, call for evidence is a, a key component of this. We will be structuring our stock take around uh, the four themes um, that we've mentioned, so around looking at risk reduction as a set of issues, looking at the delivery of health and care services to people uh, with dementia, which would include um, some detailed look at the skills and competencies that are required and what we think uh, the, um, uh, the level of skills and competency actually is within the current uh, health and care workforce. Um, dementia awareness, and then finally looking at what needs to happen around research as well. Now the time frame for this is quite quick, so we're looking to have concluded a stock take report by the summer of this year, uh, and then that will inform whatever happens next. So our sense is we really need to just get a really detailed understanding of how we think we're doing at this point, and then that will guide thinking um, going forward. So um, <clears throat> I'm sure we'll circulate this link around afterwards. This is one of those uh, tiny URLs of a very much longer uh, web address. Um, but if you go there, you can go onto our online platform uh, and complete uh, the call for evidence um, template. If you wish to, you can put as much or as little information there as, as you would like. And we'd very much welcome uh, materials to be provided by as many people as possible. Uh, we also have our mailbox, ddu at dh.gsi.gov.uk. So if, for example, you're having problems or don't want to complete an online version, then there are alternatives available. The de so this has been open for some time now. The deadline is actually uh, Wednesday the 2nd of May, which just allows us um, some time to turn around our stock take and complete the assessment of all that evidence has been gathered for um, this summer. So just to conclude then, um, I think the challenge was ambitious and rightly so. Uh, progress is being made across all of the domains of the 2020 challenge. I think that is, is very clear. Um, equally, there are some, are some areas where uh, there remains uh, progress to be made, um, and that's probably the nature of a programme which runs through to 2020 as well. Our review is the, the means by which, at the sort of midpoint of the implementation plan, we just take stock and have a look at how we're doing. Um, and obviously, that shouldn't be just our view of progress, it needs to be your view as much as anything else. So, I would encourage everybody to um, use our website or contact us and provide that information. Thank you very much.